Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Notion Hub and in this video, I'm going to show you the best features of Xiaomi 12 Pro. By the way, I have already posted a dedicated video for the tips and tricks section where I've talked about many things which I won't be covering in this video. So definitely check out that video as well. Link will be in the description. With that said, the most highlighting feature about this phone is definitely its performance. This phone sports the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor with the Adreno 730 GPU with up to 12GB of LPDDR5 RAM and 256GB of UFS 3.1 storage. Purely in terms of performance, it is the best in its price segment. Next best thing about this phone is definitely its display. This phone comes with a 6.73 inch AMOLED display with 2K plus resolution with LTPO. Once again, this is one of the best looking displays that you can get in a phone in this price segment. It's great for watching movies, playing games, and obviously for regular usage. Next, this phone also comes with some pretty impressive cameras. On the back, it has a triple camera setup with a 50 megapixel primary camera. And for selfies, you get a 32 megapixel camera with f2.45 aperture. These are some sample shots. Moving on, this phone also has a dedicated wide-angle camera. It's a 50 megapixel ultra wide-angle camera with 115 degree field of view. These are some sample shots. Next, this phone also comes with a dedicated 50 megapixel camera with telephoto lens. These are some sample shots. Next best thing about this phone is definitely its haptic feedback. Unlike your regular phones, this phone actually comes with a very premium haptic engine. It's an x-axis linear vibration motor and has a nice vibration to it. It actually feels quite premium. You can definitely compare the haptic feedback to Apple and Pixel phones. Moving on, this phone also comes with quad speakers. Yes, a phone with quad speakers, two tweeters and two subwoofers. It also supports Dolby Atmos and the sound signature has been configured by Harman Kardon. This is a quick preview. Speakers on this phone sound amazing and they are great for watching videos and playing games as well. Next best thing about this phone is definitely its super fast charging speeds. This phone comes with a 4600mAh battery and a 120W Xiaomi hypercharger. You can charge your phone completely from 0 to 100% in 18 minutes with the boost mode and in standard mode charging you can charge it from 0 to 100% in just 24 minutes which is still pretty good. Moving on, this phone also has wireless charging feature. Now, right out of the box, this phone supports 50 watts of wireless turbo charging and you can also use your phone as a wireless charger with a maximum output of 10 watts. So you can charge your smaller devices like earbuds or smartwatch. Moving on, this phone also comes with a pretty fast fingerprint scanner. Well, it's actually an in-display fingerprint scanner and the performance is simply fantastic. It almost instantly unlocks the phone. We also have the face unlock feature and that too works really well in good lighting conditions and even in low lighting conditions. It is super fast. And surprisingly, even in complete darkness, it works very well and unlocks the phone within a second. Next, we can also record multiple faces for face unlock feature. Now this is a very unique feature that's available on this phone. Like normally you can only add one face, but on this phone you can add two faces. So maybe you and your spouse can unlock your phone with just using your facial data. Next, we have a brand new control center style. Once you enable this feature, you can just swipe down from the top right corner of the screen to get the toggles. Next, you can swipe down from the top left corner of the screen to get notifications, just like the iPhone. Next, we can also open applications in floating windows. To open any application, just go to the recent tabs page, click on the app icon and then select open in pop-up view. Once you do that, that application will open up in a floating window. 
Next, we have floating notifications. You can open applications into floating windows directly from notifications itself. But for that, you need to enable the floating notification toggles for the apps from settings. Once enabled, the app notifications will also show you the option to open it in a floating window. Next, we can also resize the overall text on this phone. If you're an elderly person or if you're just planning to give this phone to your parents or grandparents, you might want to increase the size of font. You can do that from here. Next, we can also schedule your phone to automatically power off and power on. I would recommend you to at least restart your phone once a day so you can actually schedule that using this feature. You can schedule it once a day, once a week or you can customize it according to your requirements. Next, we have a brand new feature called Backtap. There are basically two options, double backtap and triple backtap. Once you enable this feature and assign functions, you can just double tap on the back to take a screenshot or just triple tap to open the calculator. You can customize this shortcuts, so it's definitely a pretty handy feature. Now the next best thing about this phone would be the dark mode. Now you can enable this feature from display settings and once you turn it on, all the UI elements change to the dark mode theme and now the UI looks much more cooler. Now this dark mode helps you save some battery and strains your eyes less if you're using your phone late at night. Next we have always on display. Now this is a feature which always displays your time and date information whenever you lock your phone. By default it's not turned on but you can enable it from the display settings. You can also change the clock style and the background. You can also schedule it to turn on and turn off automatically at a specific time to save a little more battery. Next, we can also hide the notch on this phone. For some reason, if you don't like this particular notch or cutout, you can hide it using this feature. Going on next, we have a brand new automation feature that allows us to change the phone volume depending upon the application. You can do all that from here. Next we have Wi-Fi Assistant. Now mostly, this feature will be enabled by default. This feature automatically switches your Wi-Fi connection depending upon the connection speed and signal strength. If for some reason, your Wi-Fi network is not working, or if the Wi-Fi connection is poor, mobile data is turned on automatically. Next, we have Traffic Mode. Once you enable this feature and select Extreme Mode only, the current application will have priority over the internet. To enable that, you need to go to the Wi-Fi settings. Let's say you're playing PUBG or any other game that needs internet, and if you want the best experience and you don't want any kind of lag because of other applications, just enable this feature and select Extreme Mode. Going on next, we can also change the font styles on this phone which is pretty rare to see on other phones. On this phone, we can change the pre-existing fonts and we can also download them from the theme section. Next, we have a brand new control center, which looks pretty similar to iOS and you can enable it from the display settings. Once you enable it, you can swipe from the right side corner for the control center or the notification toggles and you can swipe from the left side for the regular notifications. Yes, it's copied, but who cares? It's really nice. Next, we have Ultra Battery Saver. This is pretty similar to Samsung's Maximum Power Saving Mode. And once you enable this feature, it turns on the dark theme, restricts power consumption, background activity, reduces the screen brightness, and does all kinds of things to improve your phone's standby time. In this mode, we can only use few applications. Let's say if you're running low on battery and have just 10% of battery left, and you don't want your phone to die out on you, then you can enable this mode and use your phone for a couple of hours. Next, we have Glance for MI. If you're someone who likes to change your lock screen wallpaper all the time, then this is a great feature for you. Once you enable this feature, every time you wake up your phone, you get a different wallpaper. From settings, you can also select categories so that you can get wallpapers only from those particular categories. Going on next, we have full screen gestures. And once you enable these gestures, you can swipe from the bottom of the screen to go home, swipe and hold for recent apps, and you can swipe from the left side or right side to go back a step. For Google Assistant, swipe from the bottom left corner or bottom right corner diagonally and it will trigger Google Assistant. 
Besides that, you can also swipe left or right on the bottom part of the screen to quickly switch between the applications. Here's a quick preview. Going on next, we can also change the screen refresh rate of this phone. This phone comes with a display with 120Hz refresh rate. And that definitely improves the overall experience, making things look much more smoother. So personally, I would set it to the maximum refresh rate all the time. But if you're someone who's worried about battery life, then you can go back to the 60Hz. Going on next, this phone also supports reverse wireless charging. Many phones out there does support wireless charging, but there are very few phones that actually supports reverse wireless charging. And this is one of those few phones. Next, we have a new feature to prevent accidental touches or ignore accidental touches for displays with curved screens. Once you enable this feature, it'll ignore accidental touches on the curved edges. Next, we also have some new notification animations. These are all the different animations that we have and you can select the one that you like. Next, I'm going to show you some important MIUI 11 related features. First, we have different notification styles. From here, you can choose between Android style or MIUI styles. And there is definitely a pretty significant difference between the notification styles of stock Android and MIUI. Next, we also have a new feature called Sky Edit. Even though it has been even on the previous MIUI 9 phones, this feature is still pretty new. Using this feature, you can literally change the sky in the background. You get different presets and all of them look pretty cool. Next, we have Dynamic Alarms. Now, this is a brand new feature in MIUI 11 that gives you dynamic alarm tones depending upon the time of the day. So if you have an alarm in the morning, you get a different tone. If you have it in the evening, you get a different tone. So that's the new dynamic alarm feature. And we also get a lot of new natural sounds. Next, we have video wallpapers. Now using this feature, you can set up a video as your lock screen wallpaper or a home screen wallpaper. Here's a quick preview. Next, we have digital well-being. Now, this is a feature from Google which literally tracks all your usage, analyzes it and gives you a complete report. Using this feature, you can track your usage and if you want, you can also put restrictions upon yourself. Like if you don't want to use YouTube for more than 15 minutes a day, you can put such restrictions using this feature. Next, we have bedtime mode. Now, this feature is pretty similar to wind down from Google's digital well-being. And once you enable this feature and configure it, it will automatically enable grayscale mode that's to make your display black and white at a specific time every day or depending upon your settings. It just acts like a quick reminder for you to sleep. Now going on next, we have quick ball. You want to use your phone single-handedly? Then this is a great solution for you. Once you enable this feature, a floating bubble will pop up. You can use it in two ways. You can either tap and select the option or else we can swipe. Personally, I like to go with swipe option with navigation keys. Once everything is properly set up, you can simply swipe on the floating bubble to go back, go home or even open recent tabs page. Next we have raised wake. Now this is another super useful feature. Once you enable this feature, every time you raise your phone, your display lights up and shows you the lock screen. Once again, if you have enabled face unlock feature, it wakes up, sees your face and immediately unlocks the phone. So this feature in combination with face unlock works just like the latest iPhones. Now going on next, we have two super shortcuts to quickly open the camera application. First way is to open the camera application by pressing the power button twice. This particular shortcut works anywhere and anytime. Just enable it from additional settings and every time you press the power button twice, camera application will pop up almost immediately. Most of the time it works. Another way to open camera application is from the lock screen. Now once you enable this feature from lock screen settings, on your lock screen, you can press the volume down button twice 
to quickly open the camera application. Well that's a feature and it works, but personally I still like to use the power button. Now going on next we have 3 finger screenshot. Now before I show you that feature, let me show you how to take a regular screenshot. On this phone or any other phone out there, especially android phones, if you want to take a screenshot, press the volume down and power button both at the same time. Once you do that, your phone will take a screenshot. For some reason if that's a bit difficult for you, you can always use the notification toggle. Now coming back to 3 finger screenshot, once you enable this feature, you can simply swipe down using 3 fingers to take a screenshot. This is personally my favorite way to take a screenshot. Next we have long screenshot. Now to take a long screenshot on this phone, first we need to take a regular screenshot. We can either use the buttons, notification toggle or the gesture. And once you have taken a picture, you will get a preview at the top right corner of the screen. Just click that and then click scroll. Your phone will scroll the current application automatically and then take a long screenshot. If you want to stop in between, you can always click the done button and it will take a long screenshot up to that point. You can find those long screenshots along with your regular screenshots. Next we have dual apps. Now Xiaomi has this awesome feature called dual apps which allows you to use two instances of the same application. That means you can use two Facebook accounts, two Instagram accounts, two Twitter accounts or even two WhatsApp accounts on the same phone. Now there are many phones out there that offer a similar feature but all those brands offer this feature only for few applications, especially social media applications. While on this phone, we can use dual apps feature on literally all the applications. Next we have reading mode. On many other phones it's also called as night mode and once you enable this feature, it puts a warm tint on the screen and filters the blue light. According to research, blue light emitted by our displays at night will affect our sleep. So using this feature will prevent that. We can also change the intensity of the warm tint. We can also schedule it to turn on and turn off at a specific time or at sunrise and sunset. Now going on next, we also have the option to record calls automatically on this phone. Now this feature is definitely available in India but I don't know about other places. And if you want to activate it, you need to open the phone dialer, go to settings, then select call recording and turn it on. You can either record all the calls or few specific calls. If you have signed into your MI account, you can also back up all these call logs. Going on next, we have one handed mode. Now for some reason, if you think this phone has a massive display and if you can't use it single handedly, you can use this feature. Once you turn on this feature, you can swipe on the navigation bar from home to left or right to shrink the screen. In this mode you can literally do anything, make calls, take pictures and do everything with a single hand. You can swipe in the same direction to go full screen, you can swipe in the opposite direction to switch to the other side and do it again to go full screen once again. From settings you can also change the size of this window. I meant the screen. Next we have some pretty cool gestures related to phone calls. First we have flip to silence finger. Now just like the name suggests, when your phone is lying on a flat surface when you get a call, you can flip your phone to silence the ringer. Next we have quiet ringer when lifted. Once you enable this feature, whenever you get a call, you can pick up your phone and the ringtone volume goes down. It won't go completely silent, but ringtone volume does go down. Next we have increasing ringtone volume. Once you enable this feature, every time you get a call, ringtone volume starts with low volume and gradually increases. Next we have flash when ringing. Once you enable this feature, every time you get a call, your flashlight, that's the rear flash, flickers. Next this phone has a super handy feature to identify unknown numbers. Just like Truecaller, Xiaomi collects information from various sources to identify spam and scam calls. It isn't as effective as Truecaller, but it does work. Next we have a brand new feature called Game Speed Booster. Now this is like a dedication application in itself and once you open it up, this is how it looks like. You can add all your games to this list and then swipe right for settings. Now from here you can do a lot of things. Improve the gaming experience by clearing the cache. You can also configure the navigation shortcuts. Restrict network switching while playing the game. Restrict background sync. Prioritize network usage. Enable silent mode, hands free mode and even fix the screen brightness. Whenever you open any of the games from your list, all these settings will be applied automatically. Now going on next, we can also change the background app usage. MIUI offers you additional options to tweak individual apps to further improve battery life. You can completely stop applications from running in the background. You can restrict background access. You can restrict background sync and usage and do stuff like that. 
It might help, but usually its effects are not that visible. Now going on next, we have wireless display. Now using this feature, you can cast the screen of your phone to any television with Miracast or to a Chromecast. This feature works really well with MI TVs. Next we have MI Mover. Now if this is a brand new phone and if you want to transfer all your data from your previous Xiaomi phone to this new Xiaomi phone, you can use this feature. Just select MI Mover on both phones and do the neat fill to transfer all your data from your previous phone to your brand new phone. Next we have local backup. In backup and reset settings, we have the option to backup everything on your phone along with user data. This is really handy when you have to reset your phone and quickly take a backup of your apps. Now when you reset your phone, all this data will be deleted. So once you are done with the backup, copy it to your PC or a pen drive and transfer it back to your phone once you are done resetting your phone. Now going on next, we have some features to improve the audio experience on headset. Now using this particular page, you can select the type of headset you are using. If you are already using a Xiaomi headset, you can further tune your phone to give you best results for that particular headset. You also get the equalizer settings to tweak the audio further according to your preference. Now going on next, we have themes. If you are someone who likes to tweak the look and feel of your phone, then Xiaomi phones or MIUI itself is great for that. You have tons of themes, tons of fonts and wallpapers and stuff. You can download it from the themes app and apply them with just a click of a button. Here's a quick preview. Next we have a super handy feature called scanner. It's more like an application itself. Now this is how it looks like. You can scan a regular QR code and most importantly take pictures of documents. Now no matter which angle you take pictures in, it automatically aligns the page, changes the perspective and crops the image to give you the perfect document. You can also grayscale it and copy the text from the image. Next we have screen recording. Now if you are someone who likes to record the screen of your phone, then on this phone, there is a dedicated application called recorder just to do that. Just open the application and click the record button. You will see a floating button and you can start recording whenever you want by clicking that big red button. Once you are done, you can click the stop button and you can find that recording in your gallery. Next we have auto start permission. No matter how many times you kill any application or close an application, some applications start automatically in the background, say like Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, and they end up draining the battery, especially if you don't use those apps a lot. So using this feature, you can restrict those applications from auto starting in the background. Next we have app vault. Now looking at the name, you might think it's an app lock kind of a feature, Well, it's not. In the default launcher on the leftmost screen, you get a dedicated page with multiple widgets for quick shortcuts, notes, stock prices, call a cap feature, cricket scores and so on. So if you want to see this page, enable app vault and if you want to hide it, disable it. Next we have the option to mirror buttons. Now usually on most phones, especially phones with pure stock android, it doesn't give you the option to swap the back and menu button. But on this phone, we can do it. Next we have an app lock built into the system. We can set it up with a different password from your lock screen password and obviously lock applications. Now whenever you try to open any locked application, you have to either enter the password or we can use a fingerprint scanner. Now there are many third party applications which can do the same, but this feature comes in built and it's quite secure. Next we have folder vault. Now using this feature, we can hide files on your phone. Whether it's a video, photo or any other file, you can hide all those files in the folder vault. To use this feature, open the file manager and swipe down until you see the lock icon. Once again, you have to set up a password and it can be different from any other password you have already set. Now once you are done configuring this feature, you can select any file, go to menu and click hide to hide that file. So guys, those were all the best features. If I missed on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video and definitely check out my video on tips and tricks section. Link is in the description.
Now, if you are planning to buy this phone, please use the link in the description. It always helps the channel. And if you want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and we will try to make it as soon as possible. I am Nikhil from GreedyTech signing off. Have a nice day.